because they don't touch his life. But I'll take off that edge. You see? And God is saying here now, and now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the edge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. God said, if I take the edge, the protection, the fence, I take it off. It shall be up. Maybe the animals will come and eat all those, and the, all the wall will fall. So that's why the importance of the edge of God. We need it throughout the days of our life. It's imperative for protection. Hallelujah. And I read it quickly. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned, you see, nor dig. But there shall come up briefs, uh, briars and thorns. And I also command the clouds that they may rain no, no, more, uh, they rain no rain, you see, upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. You see? You see what I was saying? God was saying, you see? I gave the illustration. I didn't even, okay. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. And the men of Judah is pleasure, pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment. But behold, oppression for righteousness. He was looking for judgment among the people. But what is happening? Oppression. For righteousness, behold, but a, a, a cry. So now... We need edge of God. It's important, you know, to have God's edge around us. That's how we are protected. Not because we go to church on Sunday or because we give money to pastors, you know. It's God Almighty that protects us. The protection comes from Him. So if we go to the book of Isaiah 4, 5 to 6, I read quickly. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day. And the shining of a flaming, of a flaming fire by night. For upon all the all, the glory shall be a defense. You see? So when the glory of God is upon you, it's a defense. You see? You see, that's why God, you remember I was telling you the cloud of, they were, when they were led in the wilderness, you know, in the day, cloud, pillar of cloud. At night, pillar of fire. That's also glory of God. And he's saying here, I say, God will put a cloud and smoke by day and shining and a flaming fire. By night, for upon all the upon all the glory shall be a defense. So when the glory of God is upon us, it's a defense also. Is 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 a uh, uh, what a, what I put it? It's an edge also. You see, the glory of God is an edge also, and that's why God is always inviting us into fellowship with Him, so His glory can be upon us. Hallelujah. For blessed be God forevermore. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat, and for a place of refuge, and for a covert, for a covert from storm and from rain. You see? So that edge covers us from storm and from a, a, a rain. You know? Storm of life. You know? Troubles of life. You know? So, hallelujah. So if we go to the book of uh, Psalm 80, let me go quickly as we come to. A close Psalm chapter 8. Blessed be God forevermore. And blessed be Holy Spirit of the living God forevermore. May the Lord God can put an edge around us. We need that edge. Hallelujah. Okay. Turn us again from verse 7. Psalm 80. Turn us again, O God of, of hosts. And cause thy face to shine. And we shall be saved. You see? Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. Thou hast cast out the herding and planted it. Thou preparest room before it, and didst cause it to take deep root, and it filled the land. The hills were covered with the shadow of it, and the bows thereof were like the goodly sedas. She went out her bows unto the sea, and her branches unto the river. Why hast thou then broken down the edge, her edges? So that all they which pass by the way do pluck her. You see? So he said, when God break the defense, the edges, what happened? You hear? He said, why, why has thou broken down her edges? So that all they which pass by the way do pluck her. So if there's no edge of God, you are exposed. You are exposed to the natural evil people and the spiritual evil people. The bow out of the wood doth waste it, and wild beasts of the field doth devoid. Return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven 
and behold, and visit this vine. Eh? Wine. They ask God to please come back. Please come back to us and put an edge around us. When there's no edge of God around you, you're exposed to the natural evil of the people and the spiritual evil from demons and, and, and Satan. Hallelujah. If we go to the book of Psalm <coughs> 44, let me read it quickly. Psalm 44. Psalm 44 from verse 2. Okay, let me read it quickly. How thou didst drive out the heading with thy hand and plaster them. How, how thou didst afflict the people and cast them out. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them. But thy, my, my, thy right hand and thy arm and the light of thy countenance, because thou hast a favor unto them. You see? So when we have the favor of God upon our life, it's also an edge of God. You see? He said the land that they got eh, is not by their own power. And that's what I'm saying to people. It's not about how much you pray or uh, what, how many times you go to church Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, your pastor know you, he, he rank you as number one, the greatest saint. It's not by that. It's by the power of God Almighty. It's not by our own power. Everything that we have, every success we have, every victory is by the power of God Almighty. Not because you go to church every Sunday. You spend 20 hours per day in churches. That has nothing to do with that. That's even more of a religion. If you're going to church every Monday to Sunday, spending 20 hours, you need to have... That's not how Jesus did it and everybody else did it in the Old and New Testament. That's religiosity. It's not spirituality. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand... And thy arm and the light of thy countenance, because thou hast a favor unto them. Thou art my king, O God. Command deliverances for Jacob. It's God. Through his edge and protection comes favor and deliverances. Through thee will we push down our enemies. You see? Through God. It's through God that we push down our enemies, not through prophet, pastor, minister. It's through God Almighty. He said, through God. They didn't say through Moses or through David. They said, through thee, O oh God, we push down our enemies. If you want to push down your enemies, even in Africa today, we hear a pastor that I love that I always listen to him from Africa. He said, now the way now. You know, in the Bible, say the God of David, the God of Moses, the God of Daniel. Now, all the African pastors now, their congregation are saying the God of their name. It's like I say the God of my name. Now they want to rewrite the Bible. You can't change the things of God. The God of David is the God of David. The God of Moses to all the generations to come. They will read this Bible until Jesus come back. Now, their pastor now, when they talk, they, say, they sing, they say the God of the name of their pastor. A pastor was, <laughs> I was listening to the African pastor because I listened to a lot of them. Good, good, there are some I love. They preach hot fire. He was saying that. He said, now they say all of them are the God of their pastor. Every pastor now the God. Instead of them to say the God of Abraham, the God of David, Isaac, now it's the God of their. <laughs> Man. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Through thee, will we push down our enemies? Through thy name will we tread up under them under the right that rise up against us. Through the name of God, we will tread upon our enemies. Not through the name of denomination or a pastor, a prophet, a bishop, a minister, but through the name of God. They never say through the name of Moses, their leader, a great leader, a great man of God, or David, or so or all this, all their prophets. No. The name of their God, of our God also, the God of Israel, the God of creation, God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For I will not trust in my, in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. You see? He said we will not trust in our own bow, neither in our own sword save us. So we cannot trust in our own powers or whatever we have to fight. But we trust in the power of God. 
But thou hast saved us from our enemies and has put them to shame that hated us. You see what God does when you have an edge around you? He said, thou hast saved us from our enemies and has put them to shame that hated us. Not that some pastors say, oh, if you bring $1,000, God will do this. We protect your children. If you bring $1,000, oh, all the demons in Africa, we had that also. When I watch these videos, I laugh. If you bring $500, God will do this, we do that. These people didn't give anything. <laughs> That's not how God works. But I have saved us from our enemies and has put them to shame that hated us. In God we boast all the day long. And that's why I told people, I always say, I will boast in God all the days of my life. And I pray to God Almighty that will give me that grace and uh, that energy to always boast. His name. And yeah, in God, in God we boast all the day, all day long. And praise His name for evermore. Hallelujah. So let me see how many verses remain quickly, then we go. Um, so, okay, 10. Okay. But thou hast cast off and put us, uh, um, but thou hast cast off and put us to shame and goest not forth with our armies. Thou makest us to turn back and the, from the enemies, and they which hate us spoil for themselves. You see? So if God is not with us, then we cannot fight our enemies, be it human enemies be demonic enemies it doesn't matter you know so now if we go to uh psalm 2 psalm chapter 2 let me read it quick the one isaiah then we can almost come to a close hallelujah blessed be god forevermore blessed be our lord jesus christ forevermore amen so psalm chapter 2 Take it from verse, uh, verse one to five. Okay, you say, Why do the head enrage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. You hear how the enemies, they, those who hate you, they hate you. Because of the name of Jesus, because of Jesus, because of God. And here I say, let us break, they said the enemies. Say, let us break their bands as wonder and cast away their cause from us. He that seated in the heavens shall laugh, and the Lord shall have them in derision. I have a prophecy like this before. And then he shall speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. You see? Verse 3. Hallelujah. Chapter 3. Uh, uh, Psalm 3. Okay. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be, we say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My glory and the lifter up of my head. You see, God is our shield. And it's our glory and the lifter up of our head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice and he had me out of his holy hill. I lay me down and slept. I wait for the Lord sustain me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves, round, uh, set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. For thou hast mighty all my enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessings is upon thy people, Selah. Hallelujah. I'll just do one more. Uh, let me see Isaiah, Exodus 25 and 6, and one Isaiah, then we come to close. Blessed be God forever and evermore. Amen. Exodus 20. Yeah, Exodus 20. Okay. This is very important, you know. From Exodus 20. Uh, from verse 5 and 6, just two verses. Okay. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. You see, if you want to be in the 
edge of God all the days of our life. We must love God and keep his commandments. Hallelujah. Finally, Isaiah 19. He didn't say to bring a thousand dollars of or uh, five hundred dollars as a seed then. No. He said, Love me and keep my commandments. Hallelujah. Isaiah, finally, Isaiah. 19 6. Isaiah chapter 19, verse 6. And then we come to a close. Okay. Blessed be God forever and evermore. Isaiah 19 6. Okay. Okay. They shall be left together unto the fowls of the mountains and unto the beasts of the earth. And the fowl shall consume, oh no, 19, 6, sorry, that's 18. Okay. And they shall turn the rivers far away, and the brooks of defense shall be emptied and dried up, and the reeds and flags shall winter. You see, the, the brooks of defense, the same defense, you know, I'm talking about an edge. So, my brothers and sisters, you can read this on your own. Just, uh, um, in Second Peter, I say, "Be ye holy, for I am holy." And also, he said, uh, "Romans twelve one to two, where I say, I beseech thee, brethren, to offer your body as a living sacrifice unto God." You know, so that's the Father. We just thank you for tonight. We give you all the praises and the glory and honor, O God. We pray, Lord Father God, that you come to put an edge around us, around our children, around our household. Around our blessings, our careers, our profession, the ministry, our finances, our health, oh God. We love you, Lord God. We thank you. We bless you. Let this world be a blessing unto us. Let it change our lives forever and evermore, oh God. Help us to draw nigh unto you, oh God. May you come to bless my brothers and sisters. Bless every household, oh God. May you come to put an edge upon every household, oh Lord, Father God. Upon my friends, my brothers, my sisters, oh God. Those that love you so much, oh God. And Lord, Father God, those that persistently come on the line, oh Lord. And those that are listening on WhatsApp and as well, those that are listening on YouTube that we don't know, oh God. Lord, Father, we ask you, Lord, that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that you come to put an edge around us and all our children, oh God. And everything that pertains to us, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray, oh Lord, Father God, receive glory. And let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.